So have you ever wanted to publish VGC items on Roblox? Well then you've come to the right place and let me tell you that this process is actually really simple. And I won't be covering how to make the item model itself, I will be showing the process of exporting the item with the texture and then publishing it to the catalog. But let's start off by actually getting some plugins, one's going to be the asset creator plugin that doesn't have an icon and the other one is going to be the UGC thumbnail tool. So this is going to be the asset creator made by Seamaster Luke. This one is just going to make it so the whole making the accessory process is going to be basically just easy. But normally you would just get the plugin then enable it in studio and then yeah. And the second plugin is the UGC custom thumbnail tool made by Roblox resources. And another thing that we are going to need is some information from the marketplace policy. And is that if you want to publish UGC items, you need to be ID verified as well as have premium membership of at least 1000 which is the second plan. And also the marketplace items need to have premium to be on sale. But if you are just a person that wants to publish them, to upload the content from studio, publish the content to the marketplace and then keep the items on sale, you are the person that needs to be verified. But if you are doing this as a group, there are different tasks for basically different people, but they all have to meet the same criteria. But in this case, the group owner also needs Roblox's premium. And also publishing the items, as well as putting it on sale, both are going to cost Robux. And that's for getting the plugins and the premium information, but now we need to go into Blender. And I have some items like these horns right here, that I've made some time ago. And these are basically just horns with a drone texture. And also for the texture itself, right now I am in the material preview mode, right? And if I go to the shading tab, this is the material that's applied to the mesh. It's basically just this image node that has the texture connected into the base color. But let's just get to exporting this mesh. So normally you would want to have the mesh selected, then just go into file, export, and then just FBX on the right menu on the side to instantly export the model with a texture you want to select the path mode to copy and then just select this box next to it this is the embed texture in fbx binary file and sometimes the auto mod will work but i noticed that for older blender versions it doesn't do it all the time so it's better to just pick copy just to make sure then since i have more objects in the scene i want to select limit to selected objects and then go down and change the scale to 0.05 just so the object isn't going to be too big then i want to apply transforms in the geometry i want to apply modifiers then this object doesn't have an armature and it doesn't have any animations so I just want to press on export FBX. And now for importing the model in Roblox Studio. Under the home tab, you're gonna have the import 3D option that you select the file from. And after you select the object, you are going to have this window right here. Now, if you don't have the texture under the mesh, what you can do is try to upload it separately. But I don't need to import this into Roblox. And also I want to deselect the set pivot to scene origin option. And that's because the object itself, as you saw in Blender, wasn't in the scene origin also. So this is just going to move our pivot to the point where we don't want it to be. So just deselect this option so we don't have to change the pivot later. And you want to press on import. And then here is our mesh. So I'm just going to scale it down to around this size. And right now we are also going to be able to see that the mesh base part here is going to have the mesh ID and the texture ID. If you imported the texture separately, you just want to change the texture ID property of the mesh. And now to actually position it on a character and make it an accessory, here's the a rig that we want to position it on that we can just get from the avatar tab and the rig builder. Now I want to select R15 and then just select any of these options, but I'm going to go with the block avatar. So now the thing that we need is not the model, but the mesh inside of the imported model. So I'm just going to position it into the workspace. And now I'm going to position it on the avatar's head to get the right size. And I'm actually just going to copy the head C-frame position. And then just change the horn C-frame position to the head's position. And now I'll just move it up. Then just a bit further and it's still a little bit too big and something like this is actually all right so let's get to actually making the accessory so from the plugins i want to select the asset creator and then it's going to take me through these steps so first i just want to select the accessory type then i want to click the part that you want to become the accessory so i'm just going to press on the horns then click the character that the part is aligned to which means this rig and then select from the list which character attachment point should be used. Now these character attachment points are going to be different depending on what kind of an accessory you want to make. 
so I'm just going to press on HUD. And then the intended character type is going to be classic. And now the step 6 is going to say that now the accessory is going to be generated above the selected character. So I'm just going to press on next. Then I can hide the plugin. And you can see that the horns are a little bit too big, but we now have the accessory in the workspace. And really quickly I'm just going to change its name to Jules Horns. And then after we expand it, we are going to have the handle. And in the handle, there are going to be the scale type, cut attachment, special mesh and the torch interest. And since like I mentioned, this item is too big now, instead of scaling it down like this, because it's going to reset later after we put it on a character, what we need to do is go to the special mesh and then change its scale down here in the properties. So instead of it being like 111, we can change it to like 0.2 by 0.2 and 0.2. And now it's still going to be a little bit too big, so first I'm just going to change it to 0.1. And now I'm actually just going to duplicate this character, and now just move the accessory into the rig. And you can see that it's still a little bit too big, and this is where we want to change it again. And now this is really important to know. Whenever you put a accessory into the character, then this is exactly how the accessory is going to look like on a player whenever they load. So here we need to change the scale again. And now this is going to be too small, so we just need to experiment with this. And now 0.066 is going to be roughly around the same as this accessory right here. And you can see that it's also positioned correctly on the character. So again, just to make sure, you want to move the accessory into the rig. And sometimes you might be running into troubles with let's say the accessory not being positioned correctly. And the first thing that you need to look at is going to be the attachment name. So these horns have the hat attachment, right? and the hat attachment on the character is positioned inside of the head. The hat attachment is right here. So if this attachment name doesn't match another attachment in the body part that you want the accessory to be on, then you can just simply change the attachment name to the proper one. So if this one was for example a neck attachment, I can just copy this attachment name and put it into right here. And then if I move it into the character, it's going to be positioned on the neck. So that's the first thing, right? And another thing is that the attachment could be positioned incorrectly. For example, if this one was a little bit lower and I moved it into the character again, it would just appear right here above it. So sometimes you might need to change this position. But if everything is correct, the accessory should be positioned on the character properly. And for a final test, you can also do a playtest in Studio and then just change to the server view. And then move the accessory from the rig into your own avatar. And if it's positioned correctly like this, that means everything is going to be working fine. And right now I also wanted to show another example with the slime right here, with the slime mesh, because this is going to be the first accessory that I actually want to upload. But again, whenever I have the mesh positioned, I want to go to the plugin again, Select the accessory type, then the slime, then the rig, and then instead of making this a hat attachment, I want this guy to be on the left shoulder of the character. And I don't want to select the shoulder attachment, because if I select the shoulder attachment, then this character is going to be moving with the arm, because it's going to be attached to the arm. I want him to be basically just stationary. So I need some kind of an attachment that's inside of the torso. And then there is the right collar attachment, as well as the left collar attachment. So I want to select the left collar option. And then go with next. Again classic, next, and then next. And now this character is going to be a little bit bigger, because I didn't export it with the size option, like I shown in the video. So again I need to change its scale from right here. And now 0.002 is the correct size. So this is going to be the accessory. And again, I'm just going to duplicate this rig. And then just put the slime inside of this rig right here. And now everything is working correctly. 
and just in case I'm going to name this guy Rig4. And a really good comparison with the collar attachment and the shoulder attachment, if you look on my character, this right pauldron is attached to the shoulder, so it's going to move with my arm. But this cut on the other hand, is attached to the left collar right here. And now I just want to move the slime into my own character. But I'm going to have to remove the cut, sadly. And now I'm going to have the slime character on my arm right here. And now I actually need to move this guy into the workspace and I just go with the other plugin called UGC Thumbnail Tool. And now this is immediately going to position the camera on how the UGC item is going to look like. But I want it to be a little bit closer like this. And just press on accept. And now this accessory item is going to have the thumbnail configuration. So it's going to have the target and the camera value. But now to actually just publish this item onto the marketplace, we just want to right click the accessory and then press on save to Roblox. And from this menu, you are also going to see the item thumbnail right here. And I kind of see that I need to fix it a little bit. And now it's a little bit better. So the content type, we want to select the avatar item. And the asset category, I want to select the shoulder accessory. And for some reason it's telling me that it's positioned outside of the camera view. So here I just moved it a little bit back and fixed it. And for some reason I can't press on the description and the title. So after resetting it, I'm actually able to change the title, so I'm just going to name this one like Slime Shoulder Pet and then left, because it's of course on the left shoulder. And then the description can just be like a cute shoulder slime, and then model also available in Paul's slime character demo. And here the line under the description is also saying that any Roblox links are allowed. So again, the content type is going to be an avatar item, and the asset category is going to be the shoulder. And I'm just going to set the creator as Paul's official group. And here in the tags, Roblox has a tag library that you are only allowed to select specific words from. Like for example, I can't add a slime tag because it's not in the library. But what I can add is for example, cute. And anime. And something like shoulder pet and blue. And here is the thing that I said about having to pay Robux to submit the item. And we do it for 750 Robux. And then later on to actually publish the item onto the marketplace, we have to again pay. But I'm actually just going to submit it now. And then it says that it's successfully submitted. So now we need to go into the creator dashboard. And here are the settings that we just applied that we can actually just change. And then we have the item attributes. So you can change the item to be non-limited or limited. If it's non-limited, it's going to cost you 1000 Robux to publish. But for a limited item, it's actually going to be 15,000. But you have the quantity copies per user, which means that this is a limit of how many copies can one person buy. And then you can set the item to be free or resellable. And also I believe that as a creator, you are also going to get a cut from the transactions. And then you have the pricing, which is the current price floor that has different values for different accessories. And then pricing configuration. So the amount above the pricing floor, if I change it to like 15, the price of the item is going to be 50 Robux. Because we have the pricing floor, and then additionally the amount that we just added. And then there is also the do not price below option. That means if the pricing floor rises up, it's not going to be priced below a certain threshold that you just change. And then there is the sale location, where you have the marketplace and all experiences. So this is the default option for all the catalog items. Then you have the marketplace only, so the item isn't going to be able to be sold in games like the, for example, Avatar Creator. And then you have the marketplace and experiences by ID. So it's going to be the selected experiences. But I'm actually going to publish this item. And then I have the confirm publish. So the item is not going to be limited. It's also not going to be free. And it's going to be sold in the marketplace and the games. And in my opinion, this option should also display you the item price that you set. Just to make sure so you don't have to close it, then go back and so on. But I'm just going to press on the pay and publish. And now the item that I just published is going to be under the creations and the avatar items. And under the accessories. And I just need to save the shoulder accessory. So now the slime shoulder pal should be in the group right here. And here it actually is. And it's actually positioned the same as it was in Roblox's studio. 
And I'm going to leave a link to this UGC item to you guys if anyone wants to support me. And again, it's going to be in the group right here that you should, of course, join under the store tab. And now you can also see that I equip the slime on my avatar. And here it is in game. So you can see that the slime is on my character right here. So everything is working correctly. But if you like and subscribe to support the channel, and yeah, that's going to be everything for today. So thank you for watching and see ya.